ready for another MPG Omatic Highway Test Drive. This week's victim is a sweet little 2019 Toyota Corolla XSE five door hatchback. If you haven't seen this one on the street yet, oh boy, you are in for a treat. This is the coolest looking Toyota Corolla that I can remember. We're going to put this out on the interstate and see how she does at highway speeds. I've been driving this for a couple of days so far this week, commuting back and forth. I took one drive into New York City, quick run up the Jersey Turnpike to drop something off and come back out. The numbers so far are awesome. I'm averaging over 36 miles per gallon. If you're actively shopping for a Corolla hatchback and you want to get a great price, you need to get a local price. Go up here to the flyout. It's somewhere up top or go down into the description below this video. Click on the link that goes to my website, mpgomatic.com, and there's a page there that explains what you need to look for when you're buying a new car. And there's a form that you fill out with your name and your email address. Hit that button. It's going to go to your local dealers and they're going to fight over it to give you a good price. So if you're shopping actively, go to my site, mpgomatic.com, fill out the form and check it out. If you're not shopping, don't do that because these dealers are just going to bother you. Only do it if you are actively shopping. Toyota has been building the Corolla for over half a century, and the latest model marks the 12th generation. It's built on Toyota's TNGA C platform, which also underpins the Prius and the CHR. The 2019 Corolla hatchback is offered in just two models the base SE and the XSE. The SE starts at around 20 grand and the XSE around 23. That extra three grand buys a slew of cool stuff, including LED fog lamps, 18 inch alloy wheels, dual zone climate control, a TFT digital dashboard display, an eight inch flat screen infotainment system and leather trimmed heated front buckets. The 168 horsepower two liter inline four cylinder engine is equipped with dual injection and dual variable valve timing. A six speed manual transmission with intelligent shift is standard. I have not had the opportunity to test the manual as of yet. My Blue Flame XSE tester was equipped with a dynamic shift CVT, which features a physical launch first gear and paddle shifters. It feels more like a conventional automatic with simulated gear changes, as you'll see in the zero to 60 test at the tail list review. The engine is willing, the car handles well, and the standard Toyota Safety Sense features seal the deal. This one is a winner. I have never thought seriously about owning a Toyota Corolla until now, but this is a solid little car. It's fun to drive, capable, and thrifty. The departure of the Ford Focus is a fortunate turn of events for Toyota. So what do you say we put this baby out on the highway? We're going to start this loop out like we always do by zeroing out the average MPG meter into the loop at 37. We got a slow moving forward in front of us, so we're going to have to take it easy. Nice and smooth through the corner. You can see how tight we are to the line and it feels great. We're down to about 28, which is a lot slower than I usually roll at that point. And we're going to ease on. And we're in normal driving mode. There's also a sport mode, but we don't need sport mode for our highway run. Right now we're at about 50, taking it nice and easy up the ramp. You can see there's a crest up there. And once we get to that crest, we're gonna bring her up to speed or close to it. And then we'll turn on the cruise control. And at this point, we're at 60. And I'm going to set the cruise for 61. We're going to roll up this hill. And then once we get past that crest, then we're going to take it all the way up to 68. Getting passed by a nice Porsche. OK, so here's our crest. And I'm just going to use the button on the cruise to bring it up to 68. You can hear the engine kick in a little bit. And now we're settling in to a nice, easy cruise. Overall, the ride at 68 miles per hour is pretty quiet, getting a little bit of 
road noise off the tires, not much at all. Definitely getting some wind noise off the cowl. Toyota's done a really great job with aero on this car. I'm gonna do some cutaway shots and I'll show you what they've done up front. Underneath the nose, there's a really nice frontal belly pan. Cuts really nice and clean. There's some cool little, what do we call those? Little dimples, no, the opposite of a dimple on the side view mirror and over on the pillar. Also back on the tail light. So it's just this little bump to help channel the air and smooth things out. All those little pieces make a difference. This first run is with the adaptive cruise control on and so watch as it automatically brakes for that big SUV. I was going to try and get them around them but that's not happening. Now I'm going to pull out into the center lane, get behind this Lexus. This Lexus is moving at speed. I can move right along with it. Actually, she's only doing about 64. If I edged out into the left lane, we'll pick up a few more miles and it will take us up to 68. But it looks like she's accelerating a little bit. Actually not. Now, watch us pass her. We haven't had to touch the pedal. This is accelerating on its own because it doesn't see a car in front of us. There we go. Folks who are doing slow should not drive in the center or left lane. They should get over to the right. But some folks aren't great about that. One thing this Corolla is great about is standard safety equipment. In addition to the adaptive cruise control, we also have lane departure warning and lane keep. There are blind spot mirrors. There's a really cool feature on the dash that shows you what the speed limit is. So right next to the speedometer, there's a speed limit sign that says, hey, the speed limit is 65 and you're doing 68. There's no excuse anymore. I like the way Toyota has the adaptive cruise control set up on the wheel. In older Toyotas, you often see the cruise control on a stalk behind the wheel. I'm not really a fan of that. I like it on the wheel. And when you have adaptive stuff, you definitely need to have it there because that lets you get a little bit closer or get a little bit further away without hunting for where the controls are. Right now, the adaptive cruise is set up to maintain a large amount of space. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, it's not going to work. That's uh, not going to work. You can't use that. We've got two miles to go until the infamous corkscrew, and we are averaging 45.9 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. It's above spec and I'm real happy. As we roll up to the corkscrew, I like to use a little technique to improve my fuel efficiency and that is when I anticipate getting off, I get out of cruise early, get my foot off the gas and let the engine brake the car. I don't use the brakes. I just kind of coast down the speed and you'll see this corkscrew is a little bit tricky so you don't want to go in too hot. All right, here we go. Cruise control off right here. And we're gonna maximize our coast. Right now we're at 60. 55, now my foot's on the pedal. 53. We've got a really tough merge on the right, so you've gotta pay attention to what's going on. We're good, nice and clean. Now we're gonna get over. Foot's on the pedal lightly and it's off the pedal now. We are entering the corkscrew at 45, which is kinda hot. Foot is off all the way through here. Boy, oh boy, this feels nice and solid and planted. Now my foot's on the pedal again. I'm at 40. We're going to climb up the hill. The MPGs reach 48.6, but 
that's going to go down as we climb the hill. Speed limit in here is 55. There's always lots of police presence. So I tend to hold it down. Right now I'm doing 60. I'm gonna move on over to the center lane. Now we're set back to 68. So far this has been best case scenario. It's 73 degrees, it's pretty humid. Traffic has been moderate. Haven't run into too many problems. Next bit of trickiness coming up is the merge with the turnpike, the Jersey Turnpike. Sometimes traffic can be kind of sticky around here as people slow down. A lot of traffic moving on and off. What I like to do at this point is get over into the left lane to avoid all that traffic. And you heard the Corolla accelerating there because the folks over there in the right-hand lane had slowed down considerably. They were into the high 50s. So hopefully we'll avoid most of that traffic and we won't get anybody in too much of a hurry behind us because I don't want to bring it into the 70s to mess up our normal flow. So you can see the merge here is pretty heavy. Well, kind of heavy, not too bad. And then we're going to have to pick a point to move in because we exit to do our turnaround at the other side of that bridge. Don't do it. So right here, I'm going to tuck on in. That was a little tight, but that BMW is in a hurry. Now this is where we get off, and I'm going to get out of adaptive cruise and again use my foot off technique to maximize inertia. Can't go through this as fast as I usually do because there's a minivan in front of us, but it's all good because we just roll up to a light. When we're lucky, we catch a light and can roll through, but that's not the case today. Sitting at the light, which is our halfway point, and we're looking at 46.3. That's okay. It'll go down a bit from here as we climb back up. And we are headed right back onto the interstate. Nice, easy roll through this ramp. This Philadelphia Eagles fan is holding us up, but it's all good. You're probably noticing all that cardboard in the back and thinking, what is all that about? That's because I was carrying stuff yesterday and I didn't want to mess the interior up. And we are headed back on. Nice, easy acceleration. We're at 62 right now. I'll take it to 68 after we crest that bridge. And we're looking at 44.9 MPG. And I like to accelerate downhill to use inertia. Sometimes you got to brake and let someone go by so that you can get over into the left lane. Now we're back over. And we're back into cruise. That cardboard brings up a really good point. If you think you need a crossover or an SUV for cargo capacity, you should look at a hatchback like this because there is a lot of space back there. You might be looking for ways to defray the cost of that new car payment. And maybe you're considering driving for roadie or for shipped 
or for Amazon Flex. You know, I'm doing a little bit of that crowdsourced side hustle delivery service thing. This is a really good choice because it's so efficient. The cost is reasonable. You don't have to go for the XSE and go all the way up for the most expensive one. You can go for a less expensive version of the hatchback. You could easily cover the cost of your car payments and your fuel. I like the idea of using crowdsourced delivery as a way to help make ends meet rather than doing the Uber or Lyft thing because packages, they don't puke. But if you are doing Uber or Lyft, this is another good choice because there's a ton of room in that back seat. And here's the next ramp. I'm gonna take it at a cruise right here and I'm just gonna coast again. That was the lane departure warning. Rolling at about 56 miles per hour. Again, nice and smooth. Very confident. Now we're at 51. I'm gonna get back onto the uh, pedal. And we're looking at 46.5 at this point. And we gotta get up this hill without using too much gas. I'm going to throw it back in cruise. I'm going to set it to 68. Often I'll go slower up hills like this. You saw that earlier on in, in this loop. But for the purposes of, oh, I'm looking forward to getting this one done and doing the next one, we'll just go into 68 miles per hour mode early. And we did lose a bit. We're down to 45.7. At various points in this ride, it may have sounded louder than others. Like right now, it's going to get loud. Because we're going over a concrete bridge right now. Again. Concrete bridge. But then it gets nice and quiet until... Concrete bridge. This piece of 195 has just been paved it is nice and smooth and quiet so sometimes when you're watching these youtube car reviews and a car seems loud it may be because one the audio is just not great and i've been uh, guilty of that or two it's the road surface road service makes a huge huge difference in how much sound enters the cabin and there really isn't a whole lot that you can do about that you know, you can try and over insulate your cabin, but still, it's going to come in through the glass. It's going to find its way in. You just got to live with it. And we are into the sweepers. The average is at 45.7, which is a bit better than I would have expected it to be. I thought we'd drop a bit more on the way back, but we're doing okay. Get to the end of the first loop, and our numbers look great. Right here, we're cruise control off. That was fun. All that new paving, eating up the tax dollars. We all appreciate this nice, smooth commute, though. Top of this crest, we are at 50 miles per hour. I'm going to get my foot back on the pedal because we've got to coast all the way up to that bridge before I give you the final number. I bet you can't wait for the final number. We're almost there. Oh, the suspense. What do you think it's gonna be, kids, huh? The number is 46 even. Excellent. So what do you say we do a second loop, this time without cruise control? Let's reset right here and into the first ramp at 3940 gaining a little bit of speed nice and smooth no squeal from the tires at all we're down to about 36 and now we're gonna accelerate again we can ease on over we're gonna go through the same routine we did last time except we're not using cruise control on this road, we're going to keep it between 60 and let's say 72. We're going to vary our speeds. We're going to use inertia 
where we can. And we're going to lose a little bit of speed uphill, gain a little bit downhill. Right now we are at 60. So there's always a little bit of variance between these. We're not so precise that it's like a machine each one, but I try to drive them as closely as I can. And we'll take it up this hill at 61. We won't accelerate till we get over the hump. So if you really want to save on fuel, you got to be patient and you got to be considerate of all the drivers around you. If you're going to go slow, make sure you're in the correct lane. And that is the right lane. The right lane is the only lane you want to go slow in. Don't hold anybody up. Be a considerate driver. Make space for people as they need to pull on or pull off. A little bit of thoughtfulness goes a long way. And above all, be safe. The Corolla has a nice set of efficiency displays. In the center information display, there's a tank average and real-time display screen, along with a real simple eco indicator that includes the distance to empty. Over on the infotainment screen, there's a history screen and a trip information screen. And if you're doing tracking, you're gonna use that history screen to do it. There's a clip feature that makes it easy to just look at individual driving segments. And that's what I'm using for this. Riding that slow lane, keeping the speeds down. I'm at 60 miles per hour right now. Two miles until we get to the corkscrew. And we're sitting at 53.3 miles per gallon. Pretty awesome. Here we go, coming up to the corkscrew one more time. Foot off the pedal. Nice and easy as we come up to the hill. Because I started off a little bit slower, I'm going to have to get my foot on the pedal a little bit earlier. And we'll take it up the hill at 51. Got a crossover on my tail. And uh, let's see if we can make the merge. There we go. Forty-six top of the corkscrew, forty-five. Hang on, nice and tight. Forty-four, forty-three, forty-one. Those expansion joints aren't much fun, but handled it really, really well. And we're looking at fifty-six point two. On the average meter, that'll go down. And traffic is a bit heavier than the last time we hit this. Now, when you're in a heavy traffic situation, you gotta go with the flow. You can't hold anybody up. So sometimes you just pick up the pace when it's necessary. No big deal. When it opens up again, you can slow it down as you wish, as long as you stay all the way over to the right. And we're getting off the halfway point. Ooh, M2, nice. 50. 46, 45. Might be able to catch the light. Possibly. Yeah, we got it. Got the light. Nice. Okay, we are at 53. Not shabby. We'll see if that holds up. So we're gonna get right back on. So at this point in the loop, we're at 52.7 miles per gallon. It will drop as we climb up this hill. 
Certainly if I stomp on it, you want to hear what it's like when I stomp on it? Nah, that would just mess it up. I'll do that later on in the video. But for now, did you hear that and feel that? Almost felt like a normal transmission. This is a CVT. It's not conventional, but it feels like a conventional, which in my mind is a very good thing. And we're gonna crest this. We're at 65 miles per hour, 64, and we lost a little bit, 51 miles per gallon. And I'm just gonna try and ease up a little bit, pick up a little bit of speed. And we'll see what we get when we reach our final destination. Rolling up to the 295 ramp one more time, and the average MPGs are 52.7. All right, we can carry some speed through here this time. Right now, we are at 58 miles per hour. Very nice. Very nice. And we're gonna ease it on up the hill, looking at 52.9 at this point. It's gonna drop a bit from here. Crossing over Route 1 and our average MPGs are at 51.6. And we are getting off. This is the end of the second loop. This is the loop without cruise control. And I'll tell you, the numbers dropped a lot more on this one on the return route compared to what we did with cruise control. And part of that is because of how disciplined your right foot is. And sometimes you get a little tired, you lose a little discipline, and you lose a little bit of MPGs. But when you're talking about nickels and dimes, it's not that big a deal. Can you venture to guess what we have for our final tally on this route? If I had a drum roll, I'd throw it in right here. The number is 51 even. I actually just ticked up to 51 too as we cross that line. Fantastic. What do you say we go do some zero to 60 tests? Cause that's what everybody loves the best. I'm dead stop, half pump throttle.